Hi guys and welcome back to another fly fishing video. Are you thinking about taking up fly fishing as a hobby? If so, may I congratulate you on a most excellent choice. I wish I had been told these five tips that I'm going to give you in this video when I started. So without further ado, let's get into it. Over the years you pick up lots of antidotes concerning and around fly fishing. I can't remember the origins of this one, but it rings true for this video. You do not choose fly fishing, fly fishing chooses you. And that's certainly the case with me and many of my friends. Depending on how hard the fly fishing bug bites, it can be a lifelong venture for some, or a hobby that you can drift in and out of as time permits. As we all know, life can get real busy. It can take you to some of the most beautiful destinations in the world. As someone much wiser than I said, trout live in beautiful places. Gotta give me something, cause I'm not blind. Let's jump right in at number one. Fly fishing is a different hobby from fly tying. I'm not denying that they're very closely related and you could say they go hand in hand, but one does not facilitate the other. If you want to get into fly fishing, concentrate on that first and the fly tying may be something that you take up later. I know a few quality anglers that have made the dizzy heights of international teams without ever having to tie a fly. It doesn't make them any less superb anglers. The reason I got into tying was the flies I wanted to fish were simply not available to buy. There is now a multitude of commercially tied flies available to buy. If that's not what you want, there are a number of very good bespoke fly tires that will tie you exactly what you want. The last point I want to make on this then is don't be fooled by the old chestnut, tie your own flies and save money. Trust me when I tell you, it never turns out like that. Tip two then, you don't need the most expensive kit to start. Now, I'm not about to tell you how to spend your money, but if you're just starting out, it may well do to check the second-hand market. There's lots of ways of doing this online now, with eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and many of the fly fishing forums will have a buy and sell and even exchange section within the forum, where you can pick up the kit you need to get started. The other route to take, of course, is going down the road of the budget brands. Now, for example, which would do a series of rods and reels called the Flow Series, and it's designed for entry-level anglers to get into the sport. They're very well priced, and the kit's very fit for purpose. It's well made, and it's very difficult to buy any kind of fishing rod or reel now that's not made to a high standard. Tip number three, then. YouTube, it's great and all, and I really appreciate you watching this video. Please don't forget to give it a like, and please consider subscribing to the channel. It is absolutely fantastic for getting the theory side of fly fishing in your head before you actually go to the practicalities of learning the art. That said then, you can't beat getting proper tuition. Now there's a number of ways of doing this, and the most expensive and probably the best is hiring a professional guide. Getting a guide that knows what they're on 
is a stone cold shortcut to getting good at fly fishing very quickly. It's always best to check that they are suitably qualified and that they have third party liability insurance. So if the worst should happen while you're learning, you've both got peace of mind that you're covered. Another way of learning then is getting a friend to show you, but I would caution that you must ensure that your friend is a competent angler with some experience behind them. You don't want the blind leading the blind. Lastly then is joining a fly fishing club. You can meet new friends that are like-minded and very often you'll find a wealth of experience within the club. Some clubs run mentorship programs which means a really experienced angler who knows what they're doing will take you on your local water and show you the ropes. Many clubs have social events and friendly competitions that can help improve your skills. What do you wish you'd been told before you started your fly fishing journey? Please let me know in the comments section below. So tip number four is three things really. It's practice, practice, and then practice some more. I spent weeks on the grass before my mentor Ronnie Christie would let me near water. It can be a little boring casting on grass, but this will pay dividends when you get to the water's edge. Not just casting, tying knots is an essential skill in fly fishing and it is important that this becomes second nature to you. I spent hours and hours practicing tying flies to tip it. This ensured that when I went fishing and on the odd occasion caught a fish, I was able to land the fish without too many pig's tails. This is what it looks like when you did not tie your knot correctly. Number five then. Remember, every day is a school day. Some of the best anglers I know, regardless of the level they're at, and some of them have fished at world, European and international level, they're always striving to improve. Every day on the water is a learning curve and another little piece of the puzzle can go into the mine bank. So, the next time you're out, keep your eyes and ears peeled and if the opportunity arises, don't be afraid to ask questions. Well, I hope you enjoyed those five tips, but before I go, it would be remiss of me not to mention the very real requirement to have sunglasses whilst you're fly fishing. As we all know, you only get one set of peepers. If you're looking to improve your fly fishing, then this video may help. And if you want some help cracking the code next time you're out, check out this video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.